Hi everyone, I'm Hannah and you're welcome to another week's allotment vlog. If you're new here, as a reference, my allotment is in a village just outside Oxford, UK. We have temperate oceanic climate with mild winters and cool summers and my last frost date is mid-May. So it's Saturday, it's coming up to five o'clock and I've had a good few hours on the plot today. Didn't get to film much because I had my allotment helper here and uh, yeah. <laughs> but one big job is ticked off the list. Can you guess what it is? Finally managed to dig down in the new greenhouse. So if you've been following for a while, you know I've got my little greenhouse from, I've had since I started the allotment in February 2018. It's a small six by six and it's been really good for me. But this year I decided to upgrade and I've got a second hand, a new second hand greenhouse. It's a 10 by six foot and it's been a bit of a job getting it into place. But finally, I think I'm ready to put the glass in. So as you can see, the little Robin has noticed that we've dug down inside the greenhouse there and reveal lots of little critters for him to eat. So he usually sits in this um, hedge here just above the greenhouse. So he's obviously been spying all afternoon, been looking at what we've been doing. Yes, um, so I'll zoom you out and show you what's been going on. Uh, so it is on a slope here at the bottom end of the allotment. Uh, the allotment path is up there and this is sort of slopes down so we had to dig down quite a lot because didn't want this corner here floating in midair which meant to be able to fit the no dig beds in here I had to actually dig down so that's a bit of an oxymoron isn't it had to dig down to fit no dig beds <laughs> but it's done now and uh, yeah it's gonna the beds are gonna come all the way up the wood and maybe even a little bit higher, but not too high because I want to grow tomatoes in here and they are tall plants and I want to maximize the growth space they'll have. And this is the small greenhouse. And as you see, it's already full of seedlings and still got my winter salads growing in there. But as you can see, I did it differently there where the beds sort of come up the glass, which just isn't really convenient. And I might take the opportunity to change this this year if I can actually have everything I need into the second greenhouse. So that's my plan anyway, as you can see, it's sort of pushing it out and it's just not very good for the glass, <laughs> as you can imagine. But yeah, it's been a glorious day today. Absolutely beautiful. One of my earliest memories of growing your own fruit and veg is my grandparents' summer house just outside Stockholm. So in Sweden it's very common to have summer houses as a way to get out. Sort of everyone, the whole country sort of came to a standstill. This is um, post-war kind of time. So the whole country sort of came to a standstill for three weeks in July. All the factories stopped and everyone sort of had holiday at the same time. And the thing to do for a lot of people was to go out to a little summer house. So these summer houses were not fit to live in during winter. They wouldn't have appropriate insulation or even running water or plumbing for toilets or uh, heating. <laughs> so they were main basically just to stay in during the summer months. So you sort of board them up for the rest of the year and then you go out there maybe a weekend here and there or for these three weeks. So anyway, a long story there, but uh, they, my grandparents had uh, a summer house uh, with a composting toilet and all that jazz. But one of my earliest memories, getting back to it now, um, were picking gooseberries off straight off the bush. Red gooseberries they were. And it was just the first time I'd ever done that. So you have to be careful with the thorns and you pick them off and they're all like squishy and you just like suck out the inside of it. And I mean, the flavor of a ripe gooseberry is like nothing else. So I was really happy. Now we're really getting to the point. I was really happy to find that there was like three mature gooseberry bushes on the plot already when I took it over. 
However, they were so, so overgrown. So I took the drastic decision the first year just to chop them all back. <laughs> I cardinal thin, I think. What I should have done is just thin them out. But anyway, they grew back quite well and I was really hopeful for some fruit last year. However, for one reason or another, it might have been June drop, but all the fruit sort of fell off before even ripening. I don't think it was birds or anything. They weren't ripe at all when they all disappeared, fell off. So, and I didn't prune them again, I didn't dare. But this year I took the plunge because they're in a really awkward position and they're really, really huge and they're obviously not been taken care of by me. Uh, so, but this year I actually read up on how to prune them back. So I've done it. I've thinned all out any obviously old wood. I've cut each branch back uh, by about a third or a quarter and to a to a good bud and then I've cut back all the spurs so that's why I didn't do the first time I pruned I should have cut back the spurs because that's what bears the fruit just a bit like an apple tree so I've done all that now and I've sort of managed to get in and sort of weed but one of them is really congested with grass growing all the way up into it and I cannot get it out so I was playing with the idea of moving them but I don't think I will they will just have to be there in a really awkward position. Um, I don't think, they're a little bit shaded. Can you actually hear the woodpecker? No, it's obviously not doing it. <laughs> yes, so they are sitting a little bit shaded behind the greenhouse amongst all the crap and they're sort of in the way but if they bear me fruit I think I'll be happy. Not as warm as last weekend today but sunny enough for me and I could do most of the jobs without wearing a coat or a hat which is pretty good. I had to wear big thick gloves though for the gooseberries. My god they're thorny <laughs> and I actually kneeled on a thorn which wasn't very pleasant. <laughs> but yeah, so I hope, I really hope I get gooseberries this year. I know I'm a little bit late pruning them. It should have been done really in February. But it's still winter, isn't it? It's not, it's not spring until, what is it, 20th of March or something. So technically it's still winter and you should prune gooseberries in winter. <laughs> so maybe I'll get away with it, we'll see. I just find it so hard to prune fruit bushes when there is no leaf growth. So these have started shooting, so it makes it a little bit more uh, easy to see where to prune, I find anyway. But yeah, so I'm hopeful. I am hopeful for harvest this year. Tomorrow, I'm going to have a go at putting the glass in the greenhouse. Find out exactly how many are broken and how many I need to order and get ordering them. And then if I have time, I can start building the no-dig no dig beds in there. Maybe also have a go at sorting out the strawberry bed. Fingers crossed, that's how far I, I get. Maybe even sow some seeds. What do you think about that? Maybe some peas, hey? I had such a great pea year last year, so I'm really hopeful for this year too. I mean, I'm hopeful about anything, but that's about being, that's about being in spring, isn't it, as a grower? It's all about the hope of the season. The robin's just looking at me. Let's see if I can catch him. Hiya. It's Sunday afternoon. Me and the dog are on the plot. What are you doing? It's sunny. And um, the greenhouse is quite warm, so I finally managed to remember to bring out my mechanism for the automatic opener for the window in there. So I'm going to put that on. So it's a hydraulic action in there uh, that, that um, pushes the window open when the temperature changes, right? So to avoid it breaking, it's a good idea to unscrew it and um, keep it inside your house during the winter time in case it gets super, super cold. Um, they're not designed to withstand that sort of stuff. So, 
that's anyway that's me remembering the instructions on the packet when I bought it so that's uh, that's what I'm doing so before you install it again um, you put it in the fridge for 20 minutes or so minimum and then you screw it in place and it'll be easier to handle if you have to if it's at room temperature you might have to like try to push the pylon into it which it can be a bit hard so it's easier if it's um, closed in the in the put together position basically when you attach it so you can um, yeah hopefully you have watched me attach it appropriately and um, yeah <laughs> and it, that should uh, stop the greenhouse overheating because even now in spring even though it's fairly cold in the shade the sun hits the greenhouse full on and um, it quickly heats up at least a small one like mine so I still haven't finished <laughs> obviously glazing the new greenhouse so I, I've run out of shelving in the little one so I'm gonna just put some on top of the beds I've sort of picked some of the oriental greens made some space so hopefully they should fit fine we'll just say wish me luck There's just not enough space in there. <laughs> come, come. So you might see me just watering then, uh, using this water spray. I think it's probably designed for like, um, like pesticides and things like that. But it works pretty well just to water seedlings with. And because I've got such bad access in my greenhouse, I find this long like spout and the gentle kind of spray really handy just to top up. You might not want to get the whole tray out and water it, but you might just want to give the top a bit of a wet down. And for this, I think it's great. And then later on in the year, I use it to mist my aubergines because they really like that kind of humidity. It stops them getting uh, infested leaves from, where is it, trips? I can't remember now, spider mites? Maybe both. Anyway, having that damp leaves helps them, not the tomatoes. Definitely don't spray your tomatoes. <laughs> But yeah, as I mentioned in my last vlog, was it? I've set up an Amazon affiliate shop, so I'll link this down below in the description, which is where I got it last year. They should probably still sell it. I'm sure I'll find the link for it. But yeah, it's great. It's just been outside all winter, so it's lost a bit of color, but otherwise it still works. I'm not feeling my most motivated self today. So I don't feel like starting any new projects like sorting out the uh, strawberries or anything like that so I might just tidy up these um, bunches of like bean poles and pea sticks and all that stuff from the hedge so I'm gonna tie them up into bunches and then I'm gonna store them sort of upright somewhere <laughs> you can watch me do that so I think uh, quite a lot of it is good to be used uh, on the plot so I'm gonna put up quite a lot of support for for example my peas and my beans I've got quite a lot of climbing beans to grow this year and they really like these kind of knobbly branches that I managed to get off this hedge here so that's great and it means I hopefully don't have to get any more bamboo this year that's always good so it's been quite warm today but um, yeah, still definitely feel more comfortable wearing my hat and my scarf. <laughs> the wind is a little bit, has a bit of a chill to it. But yeah, I made a short video 
just going through how I make my seed starting mix. It's one of the most common questions I get on Instagram. You know, how to set up, how to su succeed with seeds. And one of the first things is to have a good seed starting mix. But you don't have to actually buy the expensive ones from the garden center. It's much easier to make your own. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna link that here. So you can just go check that out if that's of interest to you. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, it looks like, um, it looks like I'm finished, doesn't it? Looks much tidier. Sometimes it's good just to get those really shitty jobs done. Yeah. That's been annoying the hell out of me for a long time, those piles there. But it just never seemed like the right time to get rid of it. But now it's done. And I remembered I have one more gooseberry bush that I need to trim. So I can do that as my evening sundown job on the plot. So I'm just about to head in. The sun is getting quite low, but I thought I'd just start, do a quick update on where the seedlings are in the greenhouse. There's some of the stuff I sowed uh, in the last vlog and some just, yeah, the week preceding that. So I'll just have a look. So obviously these are the broad beans that I moved in here today. So the two, these are uh, the field beans and um, the dwarf broad bean look like they're coming up fine and so also the aqua dolce long pod. This one, the imperial green, has not showed up yet but it might still be here. And then I have my pea shoots which are doing fine and the beetroot and I left it inside for too long so I might have to thin these out. We'll see what they behave like, these really tall ones. I just didn't want to move them out to the greenhouse because I didn't have space yet. But obviously that was a mistake. Sorry, it's my neighbor who's cutting his head shape. Over here I've got my flower seedlings. So Cosmos Cupcake has come up. And what's this? Claire Sage has come up. And they're really cute. They look a bit like, um, <laughs> a bit like basil, don't they? But those are the only two so far and a lot of my lettuces has come up the green purslane and the soy zim but then i have a few occasional ones of each of the other lettuces coming up and what's that that's the spinach yeah so they are coming i have a few sorry the really poor camera work just don't want to fall over i've got a few uh, of the onions starting to come up um, yeah, a few here and there, but not as many as I would have hoped. The walking onion though, done better than I thought. So I tried these last year, and they did not do well. And when I looked at them now, when they came, they felt so soft and weird. But more than I thought, I've actually started growing, so that's good. And uh, none of the herbs have come up yet. There's some radishes, some, some lettuce and some... Um, beetroot there and they're doing all right my brassicas need to be pricked out very soon but I was hoping to get a few more maybe of uh, one or two other varieties but yeah yeah I might have to prick them out tomorrow actually they're looking pretty good none of the fennel has come up yet but that's all right that's why I put them at one end so they can keep growing and then uh, let me just take a step back so my uh, January so end of January so pea shoots are doing fine. They're starting to grow now, and um, yeah, the calabrese as well is doing okay. But obviously, I don't think it's worth sowing that early. It was a bit of an experiment, uh, but yes, it's definitely worth waiting till February. Artichokes doing all right. Nothing yet on the hardy geraniums or the violas. But the Himalayan poppies have actually started germinating. The ones I thought would be the hardest have actually started. So they were on a windowsill for two weeks and I actually saw some movement and then you're supposed to put them in the fridge. So I did for a few days, but as they've already germinated, 
Yeah, I've just moved them out to a greenhouse. It's probably too hot out here. Um, but since they're growing, I'm just going to leave it and see how they do. But yeah, that's interesting. Oh, and down here, all the sweet peas are getting lush again. And will soon have to be cut back a bit, I think, because they're not ready to go out yet. So I think I'll cut them back again. But uh, some of them, obviously, not so much. But I'm hoping to, this will be the turquoise lagoon, so I'm hoping to take these cuttings and root them. And I've sowed them again and we'll see, but a lot of those, a lot of them seeds were cracked and that apparently can really affect their germination. And here are all my turnips, radishes, four types of turnip, I think, and two types of radishes. And they're all doing really well. They'll uh, go out when they have about... Uh, three to five true leaves I'll plant them out but yeah as you can see it's getting quite full in here so uh, job number one get the glass on the other uh, greenhouse done and um, job number two sow more seeds <laughs> and also sort out the strawberries yes yeah, so I think those are the three main jobs this week the rest of it see if I can manage it in between working but yeah I'm gonna go inside now it's almost time to have some food. I've been longing for a cup of tea for a while now, so definitely time. Definitely time. Hello, it's Monday afternoon. And I've been working from home since about lunchtime, so I thought I'd go out, have a break, take the dog around and uh, I'm happy I put the automatic opener on the greenhouse because when we came down here I noticed that the window was slightly open and yeah it's pretty hot in there, it's like 25 degrees so it might not be set correctly but it's gonna rain for the next like 10 days so I don't have to worry about it so I'm gonna be enjoying the sunshine okay I, oh no wait it's gonna be sunny tomorrow as well but yeah after that it's gonna be rain so I'm gonna just enjoy the race as far as I can. My plot neighbor is burning. Lots of acrid smoke, but it's not blown this way for now anyway. So I have been dumpster diving or um, skip diving and I found lots of interesting things I'm gonna bring down to the allotment, uh, quite heavy stuff. So some containers some old zinc containers i think they are or maybe some other metal very thin anyway the bottoms are coming out of them but they'll be fun for the allotment a big like round tray as well to plant up It'd be lovely an old pot which if i put some holes in the bottom will be perfect for plants and a table so it's a very short leg table so you might be surprised to find out that this skip is outside my kid's nursery. So this is a toddler sized table, but when I saw it, I thought it would be perfect for sitting at, doing seeds, potting on, and also for filming at the same time, because I find the potting table I have is too small. Can't like see what I'm doing and see me at the same time and all this sort of stuff. It's just a nightmare. Um, so having this table will be quite useful partly for my kid as well when she's down here but for me as well just doing <laughs> the YouTube stuff that's good um, but yeah so quite quite heavy stuff uh, the table anyway but, um, <laughs> but I'm really really happy to have it I'm probably gonna paint it I think I will probably this I think it's an indoor table right so I think you need a coat of paint and I have like a masonry outdoor masonry paint type stuff that we're using for the house so i might just use that so it'll either be white or black <laughs> probably black uh because there's not much choice <laughs> but i think um white will just get so dirty and uh, black is probably more useful but yeah watch this space and uh do you go dumpster diving at all it's great finding stuff for the allotment oh i forgot i found a rope i'll probably be that be really useful. I'm sure it's frayed enough to not be safe as a rope rope, but for allotment stuff, absolutely perfect. <laughs> so this is why my allotment looks like a rubbish dump. 
So it just hit me then uh, when I saw the dog carrying the <laughs> the rope that it'll be pretty good for tying her up um, because she um, lately has not been wanting to stay on the plot and as soon as I turn my back she's like down in the woody bit and eating I don't even know what so yeah I don't worry about her being on other people's plots per se because uh, <laughs> there's not much going on at the moment but I just kind of need to know that she's not eating lots of stuff and then making herself sick for like a week which um, she has a very sensitive stomach she likes to eat everything of course because she's a Labrador but uh, she can't really handle it so what I was thinking of doing this afternoon I see how far I get uh, is to start doing the strawberry bed so I'll cut back the old leaves and just any decongested runners pop them up and move them away and just have a general check if I have time I'll mulch it as well and then have a check over over the netting that's covering it so the plan is to mulch all the way around the bed as well but uh, I am drastically low on cardboard at the moment so that will have to wait I will need to acquire a lot of cardboard from work I just haven't had the time to put some away and things like that so it should be fairly quick to generate a large amount because we take so many deliveries uh, it's a lab you know um, we run on deliveries basically of all consumables but you just have to do it and you also have to carry it to the car it's something nothing I hate more than carrying cardboard <laughs> it's just impossible to get a grip on and um, you don't want to make too many trips but yeah, little and often, little and often. So that's my goal this week. Every day, get some cardboard. I'm gonna go in and collect my daughter and I can get in early enough. If I can get in early enough, I'll start today and just take some of the stuff I put away. And that's a start. And before I know it, I have enough to do all the mulching that I need. Wow, it's a lot of ranting about mulching, but yeah. Uh, how's the strawberry bed coming? <laughs> yeah, that's it, I think. Yeah, half the strawberry bed done and um, quite a few runners already. I'm going to leave them just to soak in the water and then maybe hopefully try to plant them up tomorrow over lunch or something. So I'm not really sure what to do with this strawberry bed because it's so rubbish. It was made with manure the first year and it wasn't, um, it wasn't rotted down enough and that summer was so hot it sort of just baked into like a solid mass and the strawberries are still struggling to grow in there three years down the line even though I mulch it every winter so really I should just get them all out get rid of any clumps of manure and just start again and it's also riddled with uh, bindweed so it could really do with like being properly mulched again but uh, I mean they're due for renewal anyway next year so I might as well just leave them in there for now and then sort it out next year <laughs> I think you do it in autumn so maybe I'll um, schedule that job for autumn yeah but at least it's looking slightly better with all that dead stuff away from there and there's quite a lot of small plants coming so maybe they have overcome the issues and it's slowly getting there we'll see there's some really old plants I might just get rid of and plant these new little baby ones in instead but yeah we'll see but yeah I'm getting pretty cold now and uh, yeah, I need to get ready to go and pick up my kid send some more emails do those little things that we call a job <laughs> yeah it's nice to have at least a break out get some fresh air for an hour or so and the dog likes it I mean or does she I don't know <laughs> she's tied her up already using that rope first great so yeah, I'll do that. I didn't get as much done this week as I would have liked, but the base of the greenhouse is dug out and that's a big job. So <laughs> next job will be to do the no dig beds in there and get the glass on. And uh, I'm not sure which order of, which order I will do those in, but that will be next vlogs project or maybe I'll make a little video about it. We'll see. <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to leave this week's vlog here and I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you next Friday. 
If you've been watching this far, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, consider subscribing. It all really helps. See you next time.